I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocket Robotics, and this guy right here, this is Microflash Delta. Well, more or less a good portion of him. He's kind of missing a few critical things, uh, you know, a drive system. So let's go ahead and work on that tonight. So let's get this process going. Welcome back to the second build log for upgrading Microflash Gamma into Microflash Delta, the next version of my Beetleway Combat robot here. Let's get this robot down on his stand, which is quite helpful, even though I don't have any wheels to keep off the ground right now. I was building a whole bunch of wargaming terrain on here. Oh, I can't say there's a whole bunch of flocking and styrofoam and stuff. So this is a great way to keep that garbage out of the robot. But what I'm doing today is redesigning the drive system. Well, I should say redesign the drive mounts is probably more proper terminology. So let me get this robot open. So here are the existing drive motor mounts. Um, they're 3D printed Ultimaker nylon, and I'm quite happy with that part of them. However, the other problem I had with them is the even though they're clamped shut, they weren't exactly... 100% secure. If I go to this one here, which is still tight and kind of battle ready, you can see it's still kind of easy to move the motor in and out, and that did cause some issues during fights. They never failed, they never interfered with the motor, but you know, I could see at the end of the fight, you know, my motor was pushed in very close and it wasn't too far away from causing serious issues. So what I need to do is redesign these motor mounts to not solely rely on these clamps. There's a four bolt pattern on the front of the gearbox that I'm going to design around and build um, into the piece. But also, I'm thinking forward into the future where I'm going to be moving to a brushless drive system. Delta is still going to be brushed, still going to be the same motors. Um, but what that's going to require me to do, let me see if I can just pop this guy out. If I go to an outrunner brushless drive motor, the motor itself can't be used to anchor anything down because it's going to be spinning around. The outside of the motor spins around an outrunner, kind of like how the weapon motor is right now. So that means I can only rely on the gearbox for attaching the motor to something. So the motor mount can only be built to secure to the gearbox. That's what I'm going to be designing tonight. So when I'm all said and done with this, I should have a, quote, brushless ready drive motor mount, and I'll probably end up be redesigning the side. The first step, though, is to get a more accurate model of this motor itself, so I can use that to start building the drive motor mount. So I'm inside Blender here, getting ready to start working on some things. This is the current model of Microflash Delta, and the first step, as I mentioned a moment ago, is to design a new gearbox model. And here is exactly what I'm looking for. So this is the product listing on the Service City website. This is where I bought these motors from. I got them on sale a while ago where they're a little bit cheaper, but this is about the regular price. These particular holes are at an 18 millimeter diameter and they're M2 threaded holes. So, okay, M2. If I join everything together, now I've got a pretty darn good useful model of my gearbox. And let me start building a mount around this gearbox. Well, after half an hour or 45 minutes of fiddling the vertices, I got a working motor mount. Well, these blenders happy. 3D printing, well that's a whole other topic, but you know, um, yeah, so this is a good start. We're off to a good start. <laughs> 3D printing of the new motor mount is done. Let's get the motor in here and see just how well it fits. Motor, motor mount. <laughs> even this side. I get a little front part. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, total facepalm. Okay, um, so 
If you've watched my content for a while, you will know that one thing I say all the time is that when you 3D print a hole, it ends up coming to be a little bit smaller than what you expect it to be, at least what you measure it to be. I say that all the time, but yet, in this case, I completely forgot about that. So this motor mount was measured to the exact dimensions of the motor, and of course, because of that, it doesn't fit. So let's get back to Blender and try this again. So here's how we're gonna fix that problem. So I'm gonna make the hole the motor sitting in just a little bit larger, as well as this opening be a little bit larger, and I'm also gonna increase the size of the screw holes as well. Motor mount revision two. Let's see how it fits this time. Much better, much better indeed. It fits both ways. I can kind of rotate it around to the correct facing. Oh, it's a little bit of, yeah, okay. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, I have to clear out a little bit of um, support material in there. So let's get all that removed and then get this guy in the robot and see how well that fits. Well, that's a problem there. It looks like, so here's the motor mount right here, and then here's the new structure piece. I didn't provide enough space between the motor mount and the structure piece where they'd fit together, and even if I kind of jammed it in there, there's no way I can bolt on the top structure piece with it all in like this. So, gosh, darn it. <laughs> Fail. Okay. Definitely gotta do some more rethinking of this setup. Back to Blender, one more time. Hopefully, this will be for the last time. So here's what we're gonna have to do. I can move the motor mount back over this way a little bit, so a little bit closer to where it was originally with Microflash Gamma. But this is gonna cause a problem. Let me bring the motor in here, the actual 3D model of the motor. What you're gonna see is that the motor is now smashing into the ESC. In particular, those three green connectors here for the motor and the power. Because So while most of the ESC is smaller than this block, there are the three connectors down here, like I said, and that's what the motor's running into. So the solution is going to be relatively simple. I'm going to move this ESC back a little bit and merge it into the structure piece back here. And then that way, I'm going to have to reinforce it a little bit because I'm going to be cutting pretty deep into the structure piece but then I'll add some material here to reinforce it. And also while I'm at it, over here, I wanna add a place for the main power switch to go, and then provide some sort of point here for this hole so the main structure can be attached to the side of the armor. So let's get that process going. So the redesigned side piece is being printed up in my printer right now. So let's install what is hopefully going to be the final version of the rear structure. All right, here's another little face palm moment I've ran into here, and it involves a little tray that I use to hold the ESC in place. Of course, this tray I brought over from Microflash Gamma. But now that I've redesigned the rear structure, it doesn't quite fit right. So I'm just going to chop it up a little bit here, but I'm going to have to work on getting it just slight modifications to make it work with the newer rear structure, assuming this is going to be the final piece. All right, this is total bull crap. <laughs> and this is another reason why I 3D print everything, um, just for test purposes. I'm trying to put the top structure on, but it turns out that this nut right here that holds the motor clamp together a little bit is just a tiny bit bigger than the piece around it. And because of that, well, this structure piece doesn't go down quite right. So here's one more problem. Right now, these new motor mounts don't give me a whole lot of space between the side of the robot and the wheel. I mean, hold it like that you can see it eh, there's not much there maybe maybe an eighth of an inch if i'm generous um which at the moment that means these bolts here which hold on the front of the wheel guard 
are going to be getting in the way of the wheel. The ones in back should be all right now, or before they're the ones with the problem. Um, which means I indeed have to do a little bit more work here. So let me just open this thing back up and think about everything just a tiny bit more. <laughs> it's like, ugh. Every step of the way these guys can be fighting. Just every step of the way. You'd think it'd be a simple upgrade, but no. No, not really. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Let's do one more blender montage quickly to get this thing printed off. All right, one more time, here we go. This is the new motor mount, just slightly different size than the one a moment ago. And then I printed up just part of the side. This is enough of the side to get the motor mount in the robot and make sure everything fits. So let's get this thing assembled one last time. When assembling a testy robot, make sure you're using the right parts. I'm like, huh, that piece is weird. That's because it wasn't the right motor mount. The dead giveaway should have been the lack of a motor in the motor mount, but apparently that wasn't enough to let me know that I had the wrong motor mount out. Come on. <laughs> this motor mount is like a millimeter too tall. I'm trying to see if I've got any ideas at all how to fix it without reprinting it, but I think I might have to do that. Well, let's go ahead and call this episode of Building Micro Flash Delta complete. I know I didn't get the motor mount completely done. It's still a millimeter too tall. But I'm going to be dealing with that with episode 4, where the main goal is to get this bad boy in the robot. This is a 4S battery, and that way I get a faster performance, more powerful weapon, and hopefully I can get over the issue with the Titan belt without having to go in and program the... Um, firmware in the speed controller, but you know, hey, maybe I'll do that anyway. Um, but I also got to address one other problem that I really wasn't aware of with this particular design. It turns out that a number of competitions, including one I wanted to compete with in August, have size limits. Microflash is actually a very large beetle weight robot. When the, um, the weapon's fully out from here to the very back is 15 and a half inches. And there's competitions out there that have a 14 inch cube maximum size. Uh, CERC, Central Illinois Robotic Combat, something like that, has a 12 inch cube maximum size. So if I want to compete, I got to get this guy down to smaller dimensions. So in addition to the 4S battery and actually getting the final motor mounts in the robot in the next episode, I'm also going to find a way to chop about an inch and a half off the back of this robot probably redesign the wedge that I never really used anyway because of certain vulnerabilities that I couldn't use. I'll talk more about that next time. And yeah, and that way I'll be able to get this guy at least down to 14 by 14 if I want to comp compete in that particular event next year. So thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocket Robotics. Go ahead and hit subscribe on this YouTube video if you haven't done so already to get the latest build logs of Micro Flash Delta, as well as tabletop gaming things, cosplay, and other weird stuff, 3D printing things I'm pointing off the camera. I always do that every episode. I point at something off camera and you never know what I'm pointing at. I swear there's something over there. I'm actually testing out something that's working out, looks to be working out pretty cool for coding 3D prints and the lawnmower guys are coming back. I think it's technically an edger. So let me just end this show by saying thank you guys all for watching and have a great week.